when you're learning web design there's so many things new things you're learning that it's easy to forget some computer basics like computer security basics and and good passwords I can't tell you how important it is to have strong passwords for stuff like your FTP um, your when you log into your host and to manage stuff like do cPanel and all that it's important that you have strong passwords whether you realize it or not any computer that's on the internet now what I don't mean like your local computer that you could access the internet I'm talking about these servers like the web servers that are actually open for people to tap into on the internet um, they are subject to attacks every day all day now you may be thinking to yourself hey um, I'm just learning web design I'm making these little rinky dink pages Who, who's why would I be a target for an attack who's gonna come after me and why would they well it's not so much you specifically that they're attacking as, as it's just kinda like they're casting a broad net um, there's programs that people set up called bots and these bots what they do is they sit there and crawl the internet to look for computers that are doing things like their database computers or web servers or file servers and once they find that these things are ready to take a username and password they'll start an attack on them and they'll start with the most common usernames like you know admin which is a admin or guest or, or that kind of thing and um, they'll, they'll use password crackers now a password cracker is a program. I mean if you go on the internet, you, you go password cracker and let me get specific, I'm on the Mac. You know, you're going to get oh, look at that. Already you see top 10 password crackers. So stuff like this is just so readily available online. It's easy for, you know, someone who's semi-tech savvy to get this up and going. And anyway what happens is these password crackers most of them work in conjunction with a dictionary list so uh, you could think that if you have a list of the dictionary list per se let me explain that is is the passwords they'll they'll use to try to break into your site because you know a lot of people use simple passwords so the point being is is that it's really especially for prof especially prof for professional work it's really important to have strong passwords now let's talk about how to make a strong password and um, I guess it's a system like we you know because it's, it's making a strong password is a little bit difficult not making it but remembering it so I'm gonna give you two strategies over here one is a password generation strategy for yourself and the second one I'll show you um, just a password management utility like one that I use so first let's define what a good password is going to be a good password is going to have a mixture of both upper and lower case letters it's going to have special symbols and numbers and the second criteria is that you want it to be unique I mean I know we're all guilty of having that one password that you use to access all sorts of stuff so um, that would you know kind of fail the second criteria I set out here being unique so but so how are you gonna make these unique passwords for everything and then and then attempt to remember them well I'll show you a strategy that I use so first I'm gonna tap into this number one point use a mixture of uh, upper and lower case letters special symbols and numbers so what I'm gonna do when, when I make password sometimes I put at the beginning or the end of the password a combination that I've memorized that has those certain things so for example let's write out my name dr and instead of using a I'm gonna use the at sign G O instead of using the dollars uh, the S I'm gonna use a dollar sign here we go now we have Dragos just like this here I got that's why well, I, I almost have that stuff right I have an uppercase and I have two symbols so let me put some numbers afterwards I put 217 now here we go this kinda of fits that criteria 
of having upper and lower case and special symbols and, and numbers. Um, but we want to do the other unique part of it. The other thing that, I, that I've done in the past too is I'd have a combination like this at the beginning and then depending on what site I was doing I'd use like the first three or four uh, letters of that site's domain as part of the password. So for example, if I was going to register for sectools.org, I'd actually just use the first four right over here and then I'd put it in there. So that would be an example of my password for sectools.org. But now if I wanted to do something for, for example, for my Gmail account, well, what would I do? I'd use that same beginning and then I'd use the first three letters of that domain. And now I've kind of ha filled both that criteria. I filled all that stuff, you know, upper, lower case symbols and, and numbers, and then I made it unique by adding the three. So this was like more of a system that I remembered more than anything. I remembered my system, how I make it, and this combination. And if you actually go if you go and analyze your password with any kind of tool, I just saw this one, the Safety and Security Center at Microsoft, it'll show you um, that this password's strong or whether or not your password is strong. So I'm going to start typing this in and you can start seeing I'm at the at sign, G-O dollar sign, it's still considering it weak right now. Then I'm going to put the 217, we got into the medium range and once I put the GMA for the, for the Gmail, I already have a strong password. So, oh, you know, I should have said I'd only put the first three. I guess I said four in my sec, but you get it. Um, anyway, so you see how how you just quickly created a um, a good password for yourself. So that would be one way, and then you don't really have to. You remembered the system, so you're kind of good going from place to place. You know, when you're logging in. The second option is to use a password manager. Now I use a, a program called KeePass and I'd open it up but it may expose some of my passwords on this video. I don't want to do that but I'll show you KeePass is great for a couple of reasons. Um, it Well let me say it's good and bad. I'm sure there's better programs out there that have cooler functionality but the reason why I think it's good is well the first reason was that it was free and that, that was uh, pretty cool for me I like that and the second big reason it was cross-platform and this key pass if you look at it in the downloads of the actual keypassx.org they have both a Mac and a Windows version and actually I have an Android phone and when I searched the Android marketplace I also found that I had a um, that there was a version for Android available which I downloaded to my phone because I felt like I've always when I was away from my computer it was really useful to have it on my phone because if I you know had to stop in a friend's computer and you know do something really quick I could access that the password from my phone um, so oh and also keypass encrypts the file that has all of the um, the passwords in it so even if someone were to break into your computer and steal the key pass database it's not like they could just open it up they'd still need to uh, find out the password now of course um, the problem is is that key pass uh, sorry any program if someone actually downloads it and tries to crack it they could use a brute force attack which is what I was talking about before you download a password cracker and you just sit there and keep on trying to break into it until uh, until you succeed so but they even have some other special um, other things you could do with it uh, with key pass like uh, with my particular version of KeePass, when I try to open it, if the person just stole the database, they couldn't steal it without stealing some other file that I use as well um, to open it up. So uh, there are two options for you to create um, to create and remember good strong passwords. You could either use a password manager. There's tons of them out there, both free and paid. Or you could just come up with a system that helps you uh, memorize them. Either approach is fine, um, but what's important to note is that 
not doing that is just not fine because if you've been if you've gotten away with never having a problem up until now well it's good for you but I want you to know that you've been lucky and and that's it because you know it could be a real pain in the butt if you do get hacked and then having to recreate all that work but uh, you should even have something in place for that and that's a decent backup strategy but that's for another video